What is up guys, it is Styx here, and today I'm going to be going over the Pet Revenge location for this curse week, along with the current Ascendant Challenge location and guide, which is Oro Borea, I believe is how it's pronounced. But essentially, the reason why I'm going over this information to begin with, even though this is Forsaken content, so it's pretty old relative to the game, is that... Due to the reissuing of Dreaming City weapons, a lot of the good weapons that were from the Dreaming City, such as the Retold Tail, Waking Vigil, the Sleepless Rocket Launcher is actually looking pretty good now, given that it has some of the newer perks which have made Rocket Launchers good, is that people are looking for ways to get these weapons. Now while I wouldn't really recommend getting a Sleepless Rocket Launcher through this method, since you would want Forpal Weapon, which exclusively drops in Shattered Throne, you can get some pretty good Waking Vigil and Retold Tale rolls from just doing the legendary rewards around the Dreaming City. Now, of course, if you make your way up this bit of rocks here, you can get to Petrovenge, which is currently in this location, which she moves around every week. So that's just important to note is that she's not always going to be here. Very similar to Zur, except he only shows up on Friday to Monday. So, which there will be more videos of where he is, so that it's easier to get to him. But either way, so once you've grabbed all of your bounties, you will notice that one of them says the Ascendant Challenge, which is currently at Aphelion's Rest. Now, if you want to know how to get to Aphelion's Rest, just follow the gameplay here. I'm going to just take my spare. I won't cut any of it so that it's as easy as possible for you to see how long and where I go to get to this lost sector. When you get to about here, this is another location Petra can show up at. You just jump off this cliff and look over and you'll see a big hole in the side of the mountain or hill. You just go down. Um, there's a bunch of enemies in the last sector before you actually get to it. Make sure, if you want, you can pop your tincture of Queen's Foil, because that's required for the Ascendant Challenge. You can pop it here. You can wait a bit like I do. It's up to you. It really depends on how long you're going to take. But, you know, I usually don't bank too much on my parkour skills. You can kill these guys if they're being a problem for you. Either that or you could just ignore them. It's up to you, really. I mean, realistically, especially if you're on something like a hunter, you could just go invis and then run through everything. Popping my tincture of queen's foil, about to die. There's that invis I was talking about. Yeah, you can just run right past everything with this. I mean, to be honest, you could probably just tank everything too. So when you jump in, you're going to notice there's a bunch of these crystals with immune shields on them. And knights are going to start spawning. Run away from the knights. There's no value in killing them. What you're after is the taken blights that are spawning randomly around the map. I believe it's random. And essentially your goal is to just kill them. I tried using my grenade launcher, but then I realized it wasn't going how I thought it would. I just thought it was going to explode, but I forgot that it is not that kind. So you'll see Toland around here as well. That's just the thing to keep in mind. But essentially, so the whole point of this is you're going to want to kill every Taken Blight. And you can, if you want, ignore everything else. I have Huckleberry in this video, so that's why I'm trying to kill as many of the Shadow Thralls as possible. Because it just lets me do more damage in general. So you'll just see me switching between the Grenade Launcher and the SMG to take down these Taken Blights. Some of them, it's pretty like difficult to determine where they're going. So that's why you see this here is because I honestly 
thought that I could get to that from this side. And then I realized that it was way too far. So, but you won't always get that. It's a lot easier to just not take any risks because if you keep in mind the ascendant challenges, if you die, you get booted and you have to restart them. So it's better to just jump over all these knights and everything. You don't have to worry so much about the light level. Back in Forsaken, if you were below like 550 light, you would get one shot by the knights. But now that's not so much of a problem because the light levels are inflated. So. Now you'll see once you have actually destroyed all of the Taken Blights, all of the immune shields are gone. So what you want to do now is you just want to kill them all. Destroy every crystal as quickly as you can. Because you're going to start getting swarmed by all those knights coming from every direction. They're going to be respawning. So are the Shadow Thralls. And overall, I would say this is one of the easier ones. Because you don't really have to directly run into anything other than the thralls, which are just easily melted. And then you can pick up your chest, and then you can redeem your bounty, and you get two really easy Dreaming City drops. Of course, you can watch my terrible handed RNG here, where I get two helmets with garbage stat rolls on them. But, you know, maybe you'll get a Waking Vigil, Retold Tail, or you'll get a Sleepless with a Tracking Module and Cluster Bomb or something. Who knows? Either way, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.